Hi everyone, my name is Dima, and today I'm going to be talking about machine learning for product managers. A little bit about myself. At the moment, I'm working as the senior machine learning product manager at Booking.com. I'm building a machine learning platform for hundreds of ML practitioners that affects all parts of Booking. Before that, I worked at a startup called Fabric on a personal AI for job assistant. And before that, I was a data scientist and product manager in Yandex, working on a lot of different machine learning projects. We'll start by looking into what is machine learning and why is it such a big deal. Then we'll try to understand when does it make sense to use machine learning. And finally, we'll dive deeper into the role of a machine learning product manager. So what is machine learning? Machine learning is a science of programming computers so they can learn from data to answer questions. We can simplify this definition and say that machine learning is using data to answer questions. Of course, this is not a scientific definition, but this is a useful framework for us to think about how we should approach machine learning. You know, probably all of you are using different machine learning products several times a day. One of the classical examples of machine learning is classification of emails for spam. Another popular applications are recommendation engines. And as an example, recommendation of movies and TV series in Netflix. Prediction of delivery time in Uber Eats is also done with the help of machine learning. And one of the hottest trends in the model right now is computer vision. And as an example, Tesla Autopilot. Machine learning has been around for quite a while. Pioneering machine learning research was done in 1950s. So why now? Why it took more than 60 years for machine learning to become one of the biggest trends in tech? There are several reasons for it. First of all, as we've discussed, machine learning is using data to answer questions. Data is very critical for machine learning, and today we have more data than ever. On the chart, you can see the volume of data created each year, and according to prediction, it would continue to grow with the same rate. We also have more computing power to process this data and to enable advanced machine learning algorithms. The algorithms themselves keep getting better and better. On the chart, you can see the volume of machine learning research and basically grows exponentially. Not only this, but the algorithms themselves are, um, there are a lot of different open source machine learning libraries and algorithms that you can use in your products. And these are the exact same algorithms that are used by big tech companies like Google or Amazon. And of course, to launch a machine learning project, you would need more than just algorithms. But fortunately, there are a big variety of different machine learning and data tools available for you today. So this sounds pretty exciting. Almost every big tech company uses machine learning. And does it mean that everyone should use it in every type of project? This is where it gets a little bit tricky. Now, as Arthur C. Clarke, famous sci-fi writer once said that any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. And I've seen a lot of business stakeholders who do believe that Machine learning is some kind of a magic wand that can solve any problem. No, something like this. Unfortunately, this is not true. Machine learning is just a tool. And as with every tool, you need to know when and how to use it effectively. There are several questions we need to ask ourselves when we are considering to use machine learning in our project. The first one is the, the complexity of the problem you're trying to solve. Uh, if the problem you're solving is less complex, I would recommend you to use simple rules or if statements instead of machine learning. You know, for example, if we have an e-commerce platform, 
and we want to launch a new hot deals sections, it would be much easier just to select products that are currently on sale or had the most amount of orders in the last 24 hours. And it would actually work really good. The next question is scale. And again, if the problem you're trying to solve is of the small scale, I wouldn't really recommend you to use machine learning. For example, if our e-commerce platform has launched recently and we want to assign a category for each product, it would be much easier to hire just a few content managers who would do this manually instead of trying to automate this process with machine learning. Interpretability is a major issue with ML. It behaves sort of like a black box that gets an input and produces an output. And if you want to know the exact reason why a particular output has been produced, for example, for legal reasons, machine learning might not be the right tool for you. Are mistakes allowed in your product? You know, the performance of machine learning models could be really, really good. However, it would now be 100% accurate. If you remember Skynet from the movie Terminator, this was some sort of an AI responsible for military defense of United States. It actually worked really good for years, but when it did a single mistake, a third world war has started. So yeah, probably not the best application for ML. And of course, the data. You need to think about privacy and security. Are your users fine with the way you're going to use their data? Are you following the local regulations? Is the data going to be stored securely? These are all of the important questions. Then you need to think about if you have enough data. And what is enough would depend on your use case and the desired quality of a model. And of course, your data should be of a high quality, meaning it would be fresh, it would be relevant to your use case, it wouldn't have any sort of mistakes or biases against different types of users. Okay, let's say that now we've checked every box and it actually makes sense to use machine learning in our project. So what's next? This is a life cycle of a typical machine learning project. Uh, it starts with defining problem and goals. Then you would start collecting and preparing the data. And then you would train a model, do an evaluation, and finally use your model in production. Now let's dive deeper into each step and see what would be the role of a ML product manager. And just as an example, let's say we want to train a model that would predict if a given image is of a cat or a dog. Everything starts with defining problem and goals. As a product manager, this would probably be one of the most important steps for you. Everyone in the team should know what is the exact problem we are trying to solve. In our example, prediction of cats and dogs could be done for entertainment purposes or to help users with vision problems. And this might affect the decisions that are going to be made next. We need a measurable goal to see if the quality of ML model is good enough and we've solved our problem or we need to try some different approaches. And then you need to think about what are the answers we're expecting from ML. In our example, it could be either binary, either a cat or a dog, or it could be a value from zero to one, where if it's closer to zero, it would mean that it's probably a cat. And if it's closer to one, it would mean that it's probably a dog. Now we are ready to start gathering the data. This step is very important because quality and quantity of the data that you gather will directly determine how good your prediction model would be. First of all, you need to think about what data is even available to you. It might be something that you produce in your company. It might be something that's available in the public domain or something you can buy. Then the questions of biasy price and security. I've already talked a little bit about price and security, but speaking about bias, 
Um, there are different types of biases. In our example, we've trained our model on images of cats and dogs. But if we would show it an image of a raccoon, we're not really sure how it's going to behave. So you need to be really careful with this. And next, you need to think about how to get labels. Label is a term used in machine learning, meaning correct answers in our training data set. To train a model that would predict if the images of a cat or a dog, we would need a lot of examples of images with correct labels, either a cat or a dog. Now let's move to the next step, data preparation. Data can't really, uh, can't really be used as it is for ML. First, you would want to clean the data, meaning removing any sort of mistakes, any biases, any unwanted columns, and handling missing values. And then you would want to transform your data into features. Features is a way of representing the data that the machine learning model can understand. Oral, an important step, but here you wouldn't be involved as much as the previous two. Now let's move to the model training, probably the most interesting part. Uh, here we need to think about what would be the right algorithm, how to train a model, and tune parameters. No, usually people expect that this would be a product manager's decision on which algorithm to choose or how to train a model. However, this is not true, and this would probably be the step that you're going to be the least involved in. You can think about it the same way as if you are launching a new UI feature, probably you wouldn't tell your engineers which programming language or technologies they should use. Here it's the same. It would be a data scientist or a machine learning engineer who would make this decision. Okay, now we have a model and it's time to evaluate it. There are two types of metrics you can check, either ML-specific metrics or product metrics. Some of the popular examples of ML metrics are precision, recall, and accuracy. However, even if all of these metrics are showing really good results, it doesn't necessarily mean that it would translate to some improvements in your product. So as a product manager, probably you would want to run an A-B test and calculate engagement, retention, and other types of metrics that might be relevant to your product. And finally, we are ready to use our model in production. First of all, we need to think about how we're going to integrate the model into our product. We can either serve uh, this model real time for on the fly decisions, or we can do this offline. Then maybe we need to build some sort of an API or a user interface to accommodate our model. The performance of machine learning models could deteriorate with time, so it's important to set up a periodic retraining of your model. And of course, you would need to do monitoring and maintenance of your model to make sure that the quality would be as good as when you've launched it. This was just a brief introduction to the topic of machine learning. And I would say that this field is very exciting. There are a lot of different interesting things going on and a lot of job opportunities for product managers. If this is something that's interesting for you, I would recommend the following resources to deepen your knowledge. However, please don't be scared of all of the mathematics behind machine learning. As a product manager, you don't really have to know 100% how everything is working, but you do need to know important concepts of machine learning and how it works in general. Thank you very much for your attention. You can feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn to ask any questions about machine learning or product management. Um, thank you very much. And thank you for Product School for organizing this webinar. Have a nice day.